once we've done the standard curve for each of the primer pairs, this standard curve is converted to, uh, well, this raw data in the standard curve, uh, so the uh, dilution series, is converted to an actual uh, uh, linear standard curve where we plot the threshold cycle versus the uh, log of the starting, copy, uh, starting uh, quantity. And you'll get a slope. And the slope is directly related to the efficiency of your qPCI reaction. And what you're shooting for is an efficiency between about 90 and 110 percent in a qPCI reaction. Very important to get this result because a low efficient reaction shifts your CT values to the right and will cause and if you have dramatic differences in efficiency between different samples, you can end up with very large biological variability. So that's why it's important to process samples very similarly. Um, use kits, validate your primers, test everything to make sure that you're getting nice, efficient reactions. And then, once you've done your standard curve, you can't after producing a standard curve, you have to make sure that your unknowns, the threshold cycle for the unknowns, don't fall outside the range of the standard curve that you've drawn. Because you can't guarantee whatever efficiency you have between 90 and 110 percent outside the actual dynamic range of your standard curve. You may find that the efficiency actually is very low or very high uh, when you first run a standard curve. And what you can do is try the leading points at either end of the standard curve, um, because you, your samples may either be too concentrated or too dilute to uh, to um, uh, to get um, to fit for the appropriate slope on your standard curve. And uh, and, if, and if that's the case, then um, uh, then you can delete some of these uh, outly outlying points, which should hopefully increase the efficiency. And if that's the case, if it does increase your efficiency, that's great, but it means that you can't run your samples outside of the new range that you've defined for your standard curve. So you have to make sure, so it's, a, it's a, obviously it's a balance. You're not fixing your data, you're defining the range of concentrations of sample at which you are getting good efficiency for your reaction. And then, of course, in this standard curve, I would always do a null curve analysis as well, just to ensure specificity. So if we talk about replicates, OK, and this is the second to last slide in this, in this, uh, in this um, presentation, I just wanted to basically just raise the point that there are two types of replicates. There's exper there, there are biological replicates and there are technical replicates. So if we take the most simplest of experiments where we're just assessing a control sample or control condition versus an experimental condition, the three biological replicates for each of those conditions, when we run a plate, we're going to split each biological replicate, so each resulting cDNA sample, into three technical replicates. So split them into three separate wells, each of the cDNA samples on the plate, resulting in for our experimental samples, if we look at a gene of interest with a reference gene, we will end up with 18 wells for our experimental condition, and another 18 wells, gene of interest with reference gene, for our control samples. And on every plate, you always have to make sure that you run no template controls for each of your genes that you're running on a plate. So for each amplicon that you're running on any plate, you should always run at least duplicate, no template controls for each primary pair. That's a total of 40 samples. So for the simplest of experiments, you're using up almost half a manuscript swell plate. So it's easy to see how, as you add more genes or more conditions or both, how you can easily end up with a multi-plate or multi-plates of one a single experiment. And uh, what's really great about the BioRad um, CFX96 is the uh, is also the the software that comes with that instrument. So that's our latest innovation in, in qPCR technologies, which allows you to run uh, a great, highly sensitive qPCR experiment 
um, with uh, up to five different emission sources um, to be able to multiplex, but the software also allows you to combine points of data together into one big gene study, uh, taking into account the variability between plate-to-plate uh, -plate experiments and allowing you to do normalization with reference genes and all that using the van der Sample method. So it's a very nice software uh, going with the actually uh, top-of-the-line instrument. I do recommend um, looking at Amplification Central. Uh, this is a great website that was designed by the by BioRite Tech Support team to teach you more about QPCR for those of you who are starting off. And there are also some great links to uh, pre-designed primers that are out there for you to be able to, uh, to do your experiments with. And finally, in summary, the key steps for most reverse transcription quantitative PCR experiments include Sample procurement. So that was the very first grid slide that I showed you, which you should try to replicate and do yourself for your own experiments, which requires following strict experimental protocols for acquisition, processing, and storage of samples to assure good biological reproducibility and minimize the standard deviations between replicants. The second most important point after sample procurement is the total RNA extraction. So that's, a key, that's the second key step after sample procurement where you need to assure the quality and the purity of your samples. Uh, it's not enough to just measure the purity of a sample and assume that because it's pure, it's good quality. As I showed you with that nanodrop slide, um, just because a sample is pure doesn't mean that it's not degraded. And, uh, and the two can have a dramatic effect on the biological variability between the replicates. The next step is the reverse transcription step to convert the total RNA to cDNA. And I do recommend, this, is, this, can be, this can also lead to biological variability if it's not done reproducibly. So I do recommend trying to use the same amount of RNA in all of your samples for a particular experiment when you do the reverse transcription step. With the same amount of reaction time, using the same kits, in the same thermal cycler, so that everything is done with very reproducibility to convert that RNA to cDNA. Once you've done that, you're ready to do your quantitative PCR experiments with the appropriate reference genes and no template controls. And just on this reference gene point, I haven't harped on this much in this talk, but do test your reference genes. It's another major variable um, uh, that can cause, uh, that can cause uh, problems in data interpretation at the end of the day because you actually use the reference gene data to normalize your samples. So if your reference gene is in fact affected by your treatment conditions, it will artifactually affect your data, uh, causing up or down uh, uh, regulation, well not regulation, but perceived up and down regulation in your actual gene of interest. So you know, I mean the worst case scenario of this would be what happens if your gene of interest is completely unaffected by your treatment conditions but the reference gene is dramatically affected, you will get what you would think is a, is a big difference between your treatment conditions. You'd be very happy, oh good, I have a biological effect with, with my gene of interest. Well, it's a complete artifact of the reference gene, of the poorly chosen reference gene. So test your reference genes. It's very important. And, and there's a procedure for testing reference genes in the tech note that, uh, that I discussed with you, uh, that, I, that I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, which is available on the BioLab website. <clears throat> and finally, um, it's actually available on this website as well, uh, the, 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 the CMBR uh, website here, the blog here. Uh, you, can, you can find it, uh, the tech note. And finally, use the appropriate number of biological and technical replicates. The standard deviations between the technical replicates are no less than 0.3 CTs. So, final conclusion, the MIT guidelines were written to provide all of the parameters that should be met to publish acceptable results from reverse transcription and qPCR experiments. This, I hope this talk has, give, has, has touched on the key points that you need to consider and that the tech note that I talked to you about will help you to follow those experimental protocols with data in that tech note to help you guide you through your experiments.